Hi everyone, Sherry here. Thanks for joining me again. Or if this is your first time, welcome. I'd like to start off today. I have a link to a site called Buy Me A Coffee. And I have it set at $3 a coffee. And it's just for there. It's just there for those of you that just want to, you know, buy me a coffee. <laughs> I guess just to say thanks for uh, a video you liked or my channel. or So there's a couple people I'd like to thank today for buying me a coffee. Um, it was Gloria and uh, Patricia. And who was the other one? Gloria and Patricia and Denise. Yeah. So thanks for buying me a coffee. I appreciate it so much. So if you're interested in that, it's uh, in, I'll put the link in my description of this video and you can just go in and click that and, you know. Anyway, I hope everybody is well today. I thought today since it seems to be a popular video for me doing whimsical sort of watercolors. So I thought today we would do a whimsical watercolor. And I have these new um, vivid, I love the colors in this um, paint. It's uh, Paul Rubin, which is a student grade. That's how I would classify it. And they tried to hit all the marks and talk about being for kids and for professionals, you know. So I would say it was a decent quality um, student grade, grade paint. Now I have their metallic pastels and like those a lot. And I've only just sort of tested these um, vivid colors and I love them. Now I paid, I don't know what I paid, um, about, I'm thinking, it was under $50 for one, two, three, four, five, 25, 24 colors. And they come with a um, labeled for you to do swatches. And I did do swatches, which is something I don't usually do, but I did it because it was there. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to work with today. I'm pretty excited. This will be my first little painting with these new paints. So. And what I've done is I've pre-drawn a little uh, dodo bird and traced the inside circle here of this 5x7 mat so that if I'm really happy with it, I can either mat it and frame it or if I'm feeling like it belongs on a card, I can do that too. So, I have I mean, you don't have to do that. Most of us don't have mats at home, but some do. You can find them everywhere. Well. That's not true. You can find them at, where do I find my mats? I ordered them from the matshop.com or the matshop.ca in Canada. But you can get some at Dollar Tree. I know that. So those of you that don't have Dollar Tree, I'm no, I don't know where you buy your mats. Michael's maybe, or some other art and craft shop. Anyway, so I've pre-drawn my image here going to come in with my trusty old micron pen this one's a zero one as soon as i find it it'll be a zero one i always think i'm ready and then i sit down and i've forgotten at least one thing <laughs> so there we go we're ready okay i uh this is a simple drawing, and I chose a simple one for those of you that want to practice your drawing. This is an easy one. So I start with the top of the head, just a semicircle, like that. And then join my circle, my lines, then the nose. They have a big nose. Now he's coming right down to the ground. And then now the body I want, I want to give the indication of his head being tilted down. So the body's going to lift up a little bit. So kind of 
coming up somewhat. And then a big semicircle. His little feet. And his feathers. So a little circle here again, semicircle. And then these funky clouds, and this is just some double lines that twist around at the, you know, that loop around at the end. Now the nice thing about pre-drawing is that you can follow it to a T if you choose, but if you find that there's something you would like to do differently, this is where you this is where you do it. Okay, so there's our cloud. Now we're just going to come in and do some line work here. Now remember these, this is a broken line because that's the border where my mat comes in. I'm just taking this different directions. This is a, I don't know if I said this, this is a cloud. <laughs> I'm also using a new paper that I thought I'd give it a shot. It's 100% cotton paper, but it's uh, it's not arches, which is I, what I usually use. But this was less expensive, and I thought, you know what? We get caught up on things, you know, and we don't change. We don't try new things. So, you know, there could be something better out there, but we don't know because we never try it. So back to the body, and we're coming in with some design work here. I thought a nice flower, or this could be sort of a sun, or a flower, I guess. And then some of these are sort of zentangle type patterns. This I learned from Zentangle, doing this also from Zentangle. This is the eye. That's just a nice little design to bring your eye around the head of the bird. And let's see, oh, some flowers. So you do what you, you know, as long as you get the bird in, you em embellish it however way you want. You might want to just do the bird. And different kind of flower here. Put a line here to indicate the ground. 
Okay, another flower here. Now, as you see, I'm putting this in between these just to break this up. Try not to line anything up. And then another one of these little wispy kind of flowers. Okay, that's our drawing. Now I'm going to erase that and we'll come in and start painting. Okay, before we start painting, I'm going to draw that bird one more time. Just because not all of us are able to get it the first time. I know I, I don't get things the first time. So this is the head on a slight incline upward. Around like that. So we have like half a circle. Then the beak, not pointed, rounded somewhat small, but rounded at the tip. Uh, the body's going to come up somewhat. Like that. The tail. And, you know, maybe you're going to put some lines there so that you can bring in some different colors. The eye. And then the feet. And that's it and then you can draw your design as you choose you could put like I did put a flower here or zigzags or whatever you choose to do I did this which will be black and white my flower whatever you choose to do I just thought I'd do that drawing one more time Okay, now I'm just going to start with the number five brush and start painting. Okay, and like I said, these are vivid, highly pigmented paints, and I love it. I love it, especially for these little um, whimsical paintings. For some reason, in my mind, they should be bright colors. Now, I don't know why, but <laughs> that's where my head's at, so... I'm going to start off with the body, I think, and let's see, let's start off, let's start off with our flower, and I think yellow would be nice for our flower, so I'm actually going to mix my two yellows here. Now my brush is not too wet. Because I think I will come in and do some blending here. And bring in some orange. That just works well for whimsy. Okay, so my yellow is down. Now I'm going to bring in a bit of orange. Now this is wet on wet because my yellow is still wet and you can see how it blossoms, blooms. I like that effect. Okay, I'm going to let that dry. So I'm going to leave that area. Let's come in and do his beak. Now, there's a pretty bluish green here. I think I'm going to give that a shot. Now, which one is my bluish green? Uh, 
Do I want bluish green or no? Nah, yeah, but bluish green would be nice. Okay, that is right here. Look how dark that is. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Now we could bring in another color if we choose, but I think what I'll do is let that dry a bit and then I'm going to come in and do a little bit of shading just to bring that color out. Let's go up to the tail. Now, let's see. Maybe there needs to be some red in that tail. Do you think? Let's try. Or I want a dark red. I have a light red and then I have a carmine red and matter like red. That's what I want. Now I don't know this palette, so I'm having to use this guide here. So it's take take me a little longer than I might normally take. Well that's not it. <laughs> Okay. Now I don't know why. Oh, it's because it would be a lot easier if I turn this around. Now you're not going to be able to see me mix my paints. But I think I can change that. I'm going to uh, get something to mix on and we'll be right back. Okay, I've brought in my tray for my Winter and Newton. Um, paints. So I should be able to boogie now. There'll be no stopping me now. Okay. Now, I wanted the matter red. So, let's try that again. This matter red is very... Triple looking to me. Who am I to argue? Now I'm trying to decide whether I want to do all three of these and then maybe come in with some design or make it all three different colors. Let's stick with two colors. <laughs> Let's compromise here. We'll use the matter, a matter red on the first and third. And then we can come in with what? What can we put there? Let's put in another red. We'll go with uh, carmine red. I think this is more of a true red. Still a lot of pink in there. Oh, well, let's try that. Oh, I like that. I think I'll bring the carmine, or sorry, the matter red. Yeah, the carmine. I think I'll bring that into my matter red. There we go. All right. Now we can go back to the body. And let's go with the purple. Yeah. I have violet, deep violet, violet deep, sorry, violet deep. All right, let's give that a shot. 
Ooh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Now I have a limited palette from both um, Daniel Smith, M. Graham. So I didn't have a large variety of colors. So I wanted more colors, especially violets and purples, which I didn't really, I only had one of each and one that I wasn't crazy about. So I did want a better range of color and I wanted deeper, more vivid colors. And that's what I'm getting with this Paul Rubin set of paints. Now, like I said, this is not professional grade. Or they don't put a really a grade on it. They try to cover all their bases, but it's uh, so far I haven't found it grainy. It's working for me, but I would say a decent. This is a decent student grade. Okay, happy with that. Now. I want to tie my colors in. I don't want to get too crazy with the colors. So maybe I'll bring a softer purple, a violet light um, up here. So let's give that a shot. Boy, it's hard to tell looking at this. Okay, here we are. I'm getting old. So this is just a softer purple. My brush is not too wet. Yeah, that works. And then we can bring in the deeper purple just to add, again, accent this color. Sort of shadows. I love doing this. All right. That just gives it depth. Now, what are we going to do at the bottom of our flower? We need to bring in some good old earth tones. Now, I'm going to start with, I think, let's go with gold ochre. That's too yellow. I'm going to move into a Rossian, I think. It's a little more brown. There we go. Now I find when I bring in some browns, it just sort of, um, it gra grounds my painting. Which I think is needed in a whimsical painting with lots of color. Just, my, that's my view. Based on nothing, really. <laughs> okay. Now let's uh, let's make his feet a brown too. I'm going to use the uh, raw sienna with a touch of burnt sienna, just to make it a little bit darker.
Okay, there we have that. Now I think I want to bring some more yellow over here just to tie it, tie it together. So again, I'm going to mix the uh, lemon yellow and the yellow medium and bring that over to his over to his beak. All right. Now we have the head. Now this is going to be a little more tricky because of our flower design here. But let's see. We could bring this blue back up to his head. I have to remember which blue I used. Um, I guess I could use any blue. It seems to me it wasn't even a blue. I think it was, uh, yeah, it must have been blue. Okay, I'm, I'm just making noise now. It was bluish green. That's what it was. Okay. Let's try that up. Where are we? Okay, that's a little wetter than I want my brush. Okay, let's bring that up to his, the top of his head. Now I have a little less water on my brush, so I'm getting a deeper color. And that's good. I don't know, that's not the same blue, is that? Oh well. I doubt you're following me with the same color palette. I doubt you're using, uh, you could be using Paul Rubin's vivid color palette. But, I mean, it's up to you to decide which colors you want to use, so you don't have to follow me to the T with my colors here, which allows me to make a mistake because <laughs> I make lots of those. Make lots of those. And I forgive myself all the time. I think the biggest mistake is not forgiving your mistakes. I mean, if you don't forgive your mistakes, in my mind, then you're taking yourself too seriously. And that, to me, can be dangerous. So, I'll be the first one to laugh at myself and the first one to accept my mistakes. Now, if I were to make the same mistakes over and over again, that's another story. But, yeah, I try to, uh, most times, to be kind to myself. And that includes accepting the fact that I make mistakes and not getting too get angry with myself. Okay, anyway, enough of the philosophy. <laughs> All right, well, lots of colors there. I think I will come in. Uh, bring some more brown in, I think. So I'm back to the burnt sienna mixed with the uh, raw sienna, a little more burnt sienna. And then a touch of burnt umber. Okay. 
Okay. Now that's, the eye is going to be black. I've left a space there, a little triangle for white. And there's our bird for now, unless I decide to paint in this area, which I don't know what, hmm, do I want to do that? I'm going to let that dry first and then we'll worry. Let's go down to the flowers. Okay. Now I don't want to introduce too many other colors that will clash and I may stick with just two different colors just uh, because I have a lot of color in my bird here. So I think I'm going to bring down this, these colors into my flowers. Let's start with this one. And uh, let's see. Maybe, sorry about the hesitancy here. I'm going to bring in another yellow, but I'm just going to use the yellow medium, which is a deeper yellow. So although I'm using another yellow, it's another tone. Uh, I'm going to bring that into this other flower too. Now, had I not used so many colors in the bird, I would have used more colors in the flowers, but okay. And we could bring this color down. Let's do that. Just so we're not overdoing the colors. I like the deep, vivid colors, but and then some green. I think I'll go, let me start with sap green and then see how I feel about the green if I need to go darker. Actually, I think I'll use that sap green for the grass. And then go with the darker green for the uh, leaves. And just the idea of the grass here. Oh, I managed to pull some of my paint down into the grass. That's all right. Okay, let's go with the darker green for the leaves. I'm going to go with the deep green.
my brush is wetter than I want it. Okay, and this little flower. I think we're going to make that the blue too. Or what the heck, let's come in with that purple. This purple. Okay, now I'm going to dry that. Then we can come in and do some pen work and then feel if we need to touch up anything. So, back in a flash. Okay, I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> I was gone so long, right? <laughs> I'm going to uh, bring in a little more color in my reds here. And I said I was going to do some sort of shading in this blue too. So, I I'm going to do that. So let's go with our red first, and I want a, a deeper red, just to uh, accent that area. I just really like that effect. And our blue here. Our bluish green, I guess. I think it's a mixture of the bluish green and let's do a mixture of the bluish green and a bit of blue just to get another color. There we go. And then I'm going to bring the bluish green in. And I, I think I'll leave that. I think that's all right. I do want to blend this a little better though. So I'm going to bring in the purple once again and fill this in a little bit. It's just feeling a little too distinct. Okay, that's a little better. Oh, I think we're okay. Well, I want to add a little more here again. And a touch darker down in this orange. And I'm going to do that with a light red. And a touch of the orange together. There we go. Now that you could take that as a sunset or a flower, whichever way you want to go. Okay, what are we going to do on the head? I think we might. Leave that black, or we could leave it white. Now I'm going to dry what I have here now, and then for sure we're coming in with the pen work. Okay, now here we go. Now the pen work, I'm using my Micron pen, is going to, going to just tie this all together. I'm going to uh, strengthen some of my black lines. Just go over the black lines with uh, my pen. And if it goes outside the line, that's all right too. It's just, uh, this is whimsy and you can do those sorts of things. Okay, I'm going to fill in the eye here. I 
I'm going to use my Sharpie. The tip's a little thicker. Now to me, hopefully you'll be able to see the power of using ink and wash. I just find that uh, the ink just, I don't know, ties it all together, just makes it stand out. I just love the effect of uh, pen and wash or line and wash or ink and wash, whichever you like to call it. The centers of my flowers. Now, can you see how this is changing the depth of my little painting? All right. Now, fill in our area here that we decided was a Zentangle type pattern. All right, now we could tie the bottom up with the top here if we decide to go black. Let's just, I'm not sure about the black yet. Like solid black, so I'm just going to do this for now and see how I feel. I can always, you know, fill it in with the entire black. Yeah, I like that. I think that's what I'm going to go with. These sort of thick stripes rather than doing it all black. So when I woke up this morning, I thought, oh, today I'm going to wash the floors and clean the fridge. And instead, I came in here <laughs> and started painting. <laughs> There's still time. <laughs> I can still do that. I'm not crazy about this. It's just too dark. So I wouldn't do that again. But it's fine for now. It's all right. I forgive myself. <laughs> yeah, this was a good choice. I wasn't sure about putting the solid black lines. I was afraid it would be too heavy. So this is a nice compromise. Okay. Now this is where you decide if you want to come in and put some splashes in here. I think I will put some white dots in my flowers. Just another little point of interest. Gives a little more depth. Okay, I think I'm just going to leave this, well, maybe I'll even make it wider. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice just to have some negative space in your painting, just to relax the eye. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. And... I think I'm going to put some dots up in my flower here. Strengthen the line in my feet, my legs.
and I think we're done. I do believe. So let me show you how this looks with my little oval. Remember, I measured this out so that this will fit into a, an oval. Uh, oh, I see a spot here where I need to. Here we go. Okay. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you picked up some tips. Um, we'd love a thumbs up. It uh, makes all the difference in my world. And I hope you give this a shot. Lots of fun to do. And like I said, I might have used a few less colors in the bird and left the colors more for the flowers. But that's okay. And I definitely would have changed this. I think I might be able to fix that a little bit. Let me come in with my white gel pen. Because this is too heavy. Much too heavy. So I'm going to break it up with uh, my gel pen. Oh, that helps. So now it's more of a white with a black outline. Not so strong. Yeah, that helps a lot. Okay, now I'm more happy. <laughs> so again, with the mat, or if, you know, if you want, you can uh, have this at a size that would be uh, suitable for a card. This makes a sweet little card. So yeah, if you haven't subscribed, today's a good day to do that. Don't forget to press the notification bell so you get notified each time I upload. And I hope you folks have a great day. Remember, today's a good day to have a good day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I wanted to share with you that I did decide to come in with a little more pen work and do some more designing. So I've added some little wispy lines here in the tail, um, some indication of veining in this flower, and some squ squirrely cues, uh, curly cues, I guess they're called, uh, in the body. And I'm just adding a little bit more to the flowers. Now it's up to you if you like it a little bit plainer. I just add, feel adding this detail just, you know, adds to the painting. That's all. And if you want a little more appearance of texture, some more dimension, you can finish this off with a gloss medium or Mod Podge. And that adds a little bit more, as I said, dimension. But yeah, I wanted to share with you that I, I, I did end up picking up the pen and adding a little bit more um, pen work. A little bit more design here. And I liked where I was going, so I thought I'd share it with you. Just wispy lines. Okay. Yeah, so that's that. Again, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.